Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. And I'm recording this for marking and clerical purposes. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. This is candidate number 973516. We are currently conducting the exam in Odessa. The time right now is 14 o'clock. To start, may I see your identification, please? Can you just show me the page with your credentials? Sure, here is my passport. I used it for registration last month. Thank you. And what is your full name? My full name is Alona Salavyova, but you can call me by my first name, Alona. Okay, Alona. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? I live in Odessa. Odessa is a coastal city along the Black Sea, and I live in a studio apartment not far from the water. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport is swimming. I usually swim when it's warm outside, and in colder months, I prefer to go to the local pool. Let's uh, talk about shoes. Do you uh, prefer trendy or comfortable shoes? Why? Um, well, I think that trendy and comfortable are not mutually exclusive things. And I think that comfortable shoes can also look good. You can walk the whole day looking good and having no discomfort. Can you easily find your uh, shoe size in stores? I am lucky to have an average women's shoe size. My size is six and I don't have any difficulties to find a shoe size. What kind of shoes do you usually wear and why? I usually wear clogs and loafers and this allows me to be elegant and comfortable at the same time. I wear these shoes from five to six times a week and in colder months I prefer to wear boots and these boots will keep my feet warm and look good. Do you spend a lot on shoes? I have to admit that I do. I can spend an average of 1,000 grivnas a month on shoes easily, but I just recently got a new pair of shoes that cost me around 3,500 grivnas. Have the kind of shoes you wear daily changed over the past 10 years? I think so, yes. Since I have grown into adulthood over the past decade and I work now, my shoes became more expensive and they look nice. I used to wear sneakers more often when I was studying at the university. If you could buy any pair of shoes in the world, what would they be? Given a chance, I would love to get a white kitten heel shoes. They are not only looking good, but also pretty unique. I would love to have a pair, but they can be really hard to come by. In the introduction, the examiner asks Alona where they live. Alona answers this question with perfect grammar and vocabulary, saying that I live in a studio apartment. It is this type of subtle grammatical difference that leads to a band 8 instead of a band 9. Analyzing the part 1 questions further, when the examiner asks Alona, do you spend a lot on shoes? She very confidently, fluently and with great natural pronunciation and intonation states, I have to admit that I do. I can spend an average of a thousand grievnas a month easily. Notice this word at the end, easily, and how she intonates it, sounding just like a native speaker. This is what you have to achieve to get that perfect band 9 for pronunciation and fluency. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will uh, show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions and you will have one to two minutes to speak. In the one minute preparation time, you can take notes if you wish. You have your pencil and there's some note paper there in front of you. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Please do not touch the piece of paper. Talk about a person you had to be friendly with, but you didn't really like. Your one minute preparation time begins now.
Alona, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, I clearly recall uh, having to be friendly with my professor of science, Mr. Sidorov, even though I didn't really much like him. He was a stout man with a big belly and thick glasses. And I loathed him because I always felt he was unfair to students. He would give pop-up quizzes with the information we were not prepared for. Also, he was biased. He favored students who liked him. And I thought that it would be a good idea if I would pretend to be friendly with Mr. Sidorov. Especially during my final year, I had to have a big presentation on my final topic and it would greatly impact my overall GPA and overall grade point average should be 95%, but I thought it would be a good idea to be nice with Mr. Sidorov so that he would put a good grade on this final exam. Even though uh, I didn't really much like Mr. Sidorov, I would often compliment him for his smarts and good ideas. And in the end of the year, I gave a 20-minute presentation about environmental impact of the greenhouse effect it causes. And fortunately, my attitude and my presentation were well received and I got an overall score of 90%. I was really happy with that. On a hint side, although I didn't express my true feelings to Mr. Sidorov, I think I did a right decision for my future. In the end of the day, my post-secondary studies are way more important than relations or expressing my true feelings to professor who I may never see again in my life. Your time is up there, Alona. I'm going to stop you. Um, and please uh, put the note paper to the side and turn it over along with the uh, pencil. And uh, now we will continue with uh, part three. When Alona starts her cue card response, she very clearly and fluently explains that she loathed her professor because he would favor other students and give pop-up quizzes that they were not prepared for. It's this kind of unique and natural diction that attains the band nine result. Three. For this part, I will ask you a question uh, related to your response and some questions connected to this topic. If you met Mr. Sidorov today, would you still be friendly with him? Oh yes, absolutely. I don't see any reason that I uh, should be rude to him. In the end of the day, he passed a lot of knowledge to me and I'm really grateful for that. Let's talk about being friendly. Do you think it is necessary to be friendly? I think so, yes. Humans are social creatures and to be friendly is one of the life, very crucial life skills nowadays. And people are stronger when they work together. That's why being friendly is a really helpful thing, just like me with Mr. Sidorov. What are some ways that people express friendly behavior? There are several ways you can express the friendly feelings towards others. Some of these ways are being polite, smiling, asking questions, giving gifts. And uh, being friendly also means you are interested in person, not only saying hi and being nice to a person. Is there a difference between being friendly and polite behavior? I think so. There is a clear distinction between courteous and friendly demeanor. Being uh, polite simply means saying hi, thank you, and greeting people. And being friendly is a little bit more than that. You have to show that you are interested in person and pay attention and uh, spend time with a person even if you don't really have much time. How important is it to be friendly in your work or school? I think it is important to be polite at work, but not necessarily friendly. I mean, I do have friends that I hang out with at my work, but I wouldn't go out of my way to make friends if I'm not interested. Some people pretend to be friendly when in fact they are not. Why do people do this? Um, just uh, like me with Professor Sidorov, I had to be friendly because I wanted to put myself in a more favorable position. And I noticed that people are usually friendly with authorities and when they want to avoid some sort of trouble. I'm surprised at level of friendliness people express when they talk to a policeman or their boss. They seem to uh, want to get away with the trouble. 
Is it a good idea to ask a person directly what you want? I think uh, nowadays it is a valuable thing to get to the point because everyone is rushed and to speak about myself I will appreciate if people get to the point directly and don't beat around the bush. That is the end of part three that concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark available online in two days and you will have uh, the mark for this section with the other sections uh, in the mail with your certificate in about 10 days. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. For a band nine, the answers must be well developed with good detail throughout the entire interview without over speaking or going off topic. In part three, when the examiner asks Alona, why do some people pretend to be friendly with others when they're actually not? She does a great job of connecting her idea and giving lots of detail. She expresses that just like with Mr. Sidorov, people often pretend to be friendly with others because they have invested interests. And then she explains that people do this when they want to get out of trouble, like with the police. With lots of practice and feedback, you too can get these great results. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. I want to give you the ultimate help for a perfect band 9 score on your next IELTS exam. Join our premium IELTS package at aehelp.com for strategies, videos, practice exams, and interactive courses. Use the code ULTIMATE9 for a 25% discount. Click the link in the video description. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video? Click right up here. And click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.